there. Thank you for watching Two Sticks. My name is Scott. This is my partner in crime, Belita. Belita. Uh, we're going to bring you our third video today. This is going to be a song reaction. Okay, we're going to do something a little bit different. We did uh, a metal song last time, and we're going to do something from 20th century classical music. So this is a uh, movement in classical music called Minimalism. The most famous uh, art, I guess, composer in that style is Philip Glass. Probably a lot of you what, know who he is. Is this metal or what is it? No, this is like classical music. Oh, like classical classical. Yeah. Okay, yeah, not like classical is, rock. Right, yeah. All right. Steve Reich is his name. This is a uh, comp this is from a compilation that he did with the Kronos Quartet. I don't know if you're familiar with them, but they're another uh, classical music quartet. You know, I, I listen String to classical quartet, music, yeah. but I don't necessarily... I'm like, oh, that's Chopin and that's Schumann. That's who that is, yeah. I just thought this would be a cool uh, kind of different thing that we could do. So... Uh, do you have any preliminary thoughts or incidentally anything? this this is the first time you and I am filming that I'm not in my PJs because <sighs> usually I'm he's just like hey uh, let's go you know let's go film something and it's like early Saturday I'm like all right let me just you know put on some slippers and come over yeah so I'm, I'm actually we're just actually we're both showered we're both <laughs> a little dressed up we're trying to put on a good you know persona here make you guys think we're not both slobs so well, uh, speak for yourself buddy. yeah but uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and start the song. Off we go. This song is called "Different Trains," part two. This is part two of a three-part suite. <laughs> Freaked out that there's vocals because you usually don't get that in classical music. Right. I'm like, is this some kind of new agey stuff? Well, this is 20th century uh, minimalism. This is a little bit different from. It's modern classic. Like right. What? We're talking 1800s? No, this is 19th century. 1900s. Yeah. So around when? When was this? Um, that's a great question. I don't know. I think this might have come out in like the 60s or 70s. Because right now it ain't sounding so good. It's like, what are you guys doing? Tuning your, your, your violins? Like, what's right. your problem here, you know? Well, um, different trains actually refers to uh, the different trains that were used to transport uh, Jews during the Holocaust. So this yeah. has got a very, like, more a more somber kind of gotcha. vibe. And I think a lot of these uh, snippets of vocals you're hearing are uh, snippets of interviews from people who survived the concentration. Okay. This is more like a surreal. Yeah? It's kind of a surreal type of thing. It's um, moody. So what are your initial impressions? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Well, the joking. same stuff that I said. It's surreal and moody and, and uh, that's a... Uh, I'm, I'm getting trepidatious because I'm like, seven <laughs> minutes of this? Whoa. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, it is. It's very different. It's uh, not like, uh, it's definitely not uh, Wagner or uh, Beethoven, you know? I want to play this in the background to create some kind of a mood for a horror movie, you know, or uh, something sinister. You ever, you ever beat mix? Beat mix? What do you mean? Okay, um, like I, I used to DJ a little bit as a as a odd job, right? And so you can play some kind of beat in the background, and then you can mix another song into it. You can speed up or slow down the RPMs. Like you would speed this up and slow down the RPMs of the other song. You can do it all digital, digitally, right? I think this would make a cool beat mix, like on top of a. A drum and bass or something. Yeah, I could see this being sampled by like a hip hop artist somewhere. It's like, <laughs> you know, trying as a little bit of avant garde that wants to sound like uh, off the wall and cool. Right. And yeah. So why'd you pick this one? Um, I think this is just a good uh, representation of the of the suite and the piece of music. Like I said, I know it's dour and somber, but and the point of minimalism actually, um, one of the things that minimalist composers are known for is taking the same uh, melodic motif or theme and just repeating it over and over again with variations to it. So if you listen to this, it sounds like holy shit! It sounds like they've been working with the same you know melody almost for the whole time. 
but that's uh, the hallmark of, of minimalist uh, music. That's what they call it. I'm, I'm going to say something like, say something like that. That's what drum and bass is. <laughs> drum and bass is what they call nowhere music, right? It's just repetitive thing and very little change and, you know, right? It's kind of like this. It's kind of like a classic, somber, surreal version of drum and bass. So, you know, and that, now they're kind of... Yeah. It's unpleasant. It is. It's unpleasant. <laughs> you're like, you're like, hey, I know what I'll do. Hey, Belita, come over. We'll, we'll do another reaction and I'll torture you. Well, I mean, it was either this or or uh, an avant-garde rock band, which I don't think you would have dug that, so. But this isn't that hey. bad. We're, we're over halfway through it. No, no, but, but two sticks. It's not about just looking at what you like, yeah? Right. We, we agree. It's not about looking at what you like, it's not about looking at what you're familiar with. That's part of it. But it is about exploring new things. And, you know, you were saying, your biggest issue with music is that there's so much new music out there, you don't know, people don't know what to listen to. And so you want to sample, you know, you want to, you want to put our reactions up there and say, you know, well, this is what it is, this is what it's doing to me versus you. I guarantee you there's going to be people out there that visit our channel that say, that go, holy crap, they did Dream Theater, and then Steve Reich, like the next reaction, and they did like, you know, uh, whatever video you're, yeah, put up so another exotic. Uh, so, so this is my reaction, right? What is your reaction? What, what does this do to you? What does it make you feel? Um, this reminds me of a book that I read by uh, Victor Frankl called A Man's Search for Meaning. Okay. And uh, Victor Frankl was a uh, Jewish psychologist who actually uh, was deported to Auschwitz and spent like the war years in concentration. I have heard of him. I haven't read the book, but I heard of him. Yeah, the book is a, is a really good book. He, uh, he made it out and survived and basically wrote a book on like the, the mental uh, strategies that people use like and that like the difference between the people that died and the, and the people that survived as far as their mentality how they learn to approach life and you have to even if it's mean, it appears meaningless you have to generate meaning you know what I mean yeah see so what I would do this this is to me this is like um, they're over at a friend's house, and his mom is like the sweetest lady in the world, and she cooks like something, and you have to really pretend to like it. Yeah. <laughs> You're just like, oh my god. That's how you feel right now. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, oh my god, what is, what is it? It's like, is it like, it's cornbread, but it has... What do they put in there? Peanut butter and crickets or something, you know? But, you're, but you, you love, you like... You don't want to make a scene. You like your friend's mom. Well, to be so fair, to be fair, this is pretty off the wall. Like, yeah, even, it is. even for this genre, like uh, Philip Glass, for example, the reason why he's so famous and so popular, uh, he composes the same style of classical music, but his music is a lot more uh, catchy. I want to say, and just like, it, like it gets used for film scores and for you know. It's effective. Things. You know why it's, it's effective? effective? Right. It. I guess if I was on a train going to Auschwitz, I'd feel this. Yeah. I would feel pretty crappy, right? But on the other hand, and looking at the picture of the train track, you know, real somber, um, and it's you have the train sounds and everything. Like, uh, but now I know exactly what this particular emotion I'm feeling. Like, okay, that will generate that emotion, right? So, yeah. so I would have a use for this, okay? I would I would use this as background in a movie in certain parts of a movie like a horror movie or a detective movie you know what I'm saying when I was in college I used to meditate with this uh, music on think it's about just, what would happen if you did that it's just whack. <laughs> it's just whack. what's wrong with you so guys that was different trains by Stephen Wright believe it was very polite he sat through it with me it was different it was very different so um, we're glad that you guys watched. Thank you so much for supporting the channel. If you dig what we're doing, like, comment, subscribe, and we'll be sure to churn out more videos for you guys.